close gloves here. I'm wearing a hat. Today, I'm going to show you how to make these EDM horn sounds. They sound like this. Or you could choose like a different tone, you know, do a higher tone. So someone was asking me, how do you make this? And they might be thinking it's synthesis of some kind. It's totally sampling. Maybe you already knew it's sampling, but it's definitely sampling. Oh, and the key to this thing is your cool brass sound. So do you have a cool brass library? That's sort of the question you come down to it. And in reality, all you need is a cool brass sample. You generally need two notes, like whatever key you're working in, you want that note for sure. And then you want whatever the fifth maybe or the fourth or something that you can use to like vary it up. But in reality, these tracks only have one or two notes. So despite me using the Contact Factory library, so if you own Contact, you should have this. You can go, and that's deliberately why I chose it, because I have the Spitfire Symphonic Brass. I consider layering that in and seeing what, what I could get out of it. But anyways, just get some cool brass sounds. The New York Philharmonic, I believe it's, the, is it the New York one? I don't know. One of the Philharmonics, though, uh, they release their samples. Maybe it's just the Philharmonic, but they release samples for free on their website. You can go in, you can download them, and they're, they're I believe they're individual samples. I've never actually gone there, but I know that they're a great source for high quality samples, and you can get like a tuba playing the note C or whatever. And what I recommend is I'm using the brass ensemble, so it is like this, this particular patch has like trumpets and French horns as you get higher, and tubas and trombones. It's like layered them on there, so I can play this. <laughs> You see, they're different notes, and so I, so this particular patch has like layered things in there. What I'm saying is, when you get your samples, you're gonna want to layer them together. So you're gonna want to get a tuba and a trumpet and layer them together, or maybe not a trumpet because they're not of the similar range. So you're gonna want to get like, if the tuba is playing really low, you want to get a tuba and a trombone and, and maybe a bass trombone. Actually, I highly recommend a bass trombone. Probably sound really cool. This particular one, I don't believe has a bass trombone. Maybe it does. I don't know. I did not delve into it. I just wanted a cool brass sound. So I got this brass library. And now without all the extra things on, so let me turn it off, is what I have. That's it. And you can actually hear the, the room, even though they tried to get rid of it, I guess, with the with chopping up the samples and editing them. But you can totally hear the room. And then what you do is you put it in a reverb of some kind. So we got this reverb. Now we can get a huge number of sounds out of this as well by changing the articulation. So that's another thing to take into consideration. That's forte piano, forzano. So it, you can get a huge number of sounds. I've heard all of these being used in some variation, some sort of a track. So uh, after you have that down, what next? Well, we've, we've put reverb on it and we've got our cool sound and we've discovered that. Now I'm playing the lowest note they have to offer, but I've shown, I showed you earlier that you can get some cooler, higher tones. Next, I went through an EQ. This was more of a habit than anything. I was just messing with the spectrum, seeing what I could get out of it, and I settled on this boost around 2K. Honestly, you probably could skip this step. It wouldn't make that much of a difference. The big step, the important step, and something that I should point out that's important is that there is reverb in the actual brass library. Like, not that it's in the library. It's it's basically a reverb plugin. Well, it is, and but it's happening before it reaches the EQ and compression stage. Now, the EQ stage we could again skip, but it's important that this reverb happens here, and it's a it's a hall reverb on its default amount. So just find a hall reverb, get some some big sort of room happening, and then go to your compressor. <laughs> And you get that. It's really important that the reverb gets brought up for this particular sound. This is a this is sort of an iconic sound for this sort of a thing. So let's open up the Maximus. Now, in here, the way I view this is it's a multiband compressor, and I have a series on it, my FL12 effects series. There's like five videos on how to use Maximus and what all the controls do and stuff. But you could really go crazy with trying to do this. Now, when you open this up plugin, my mindset is how am I gonna affect the spectrum? I'm not playing like a huge amount with thinking about, oh, am I preserving my transient? Am I doing this? Is it clear? Is it punchy? All that stuff. No, 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 no. That's not my mindset. My mindset is what's happening to my low mids and highs. My mindset is uh, how do I want to balance those? I could care less about the transients at this point. Like, I just don't care. There's a brass sound, so I just don't care that much about it. So, so just so you know, I don't care. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> for this particular sound. So low mids, highs, and we're messing with the spectrum, right? And what I did here is something pretty simple because you could see this, you could say like, oh wow, look at all that pre-gain and stuff. And you could look at it like as a really complicated mess because you know, the sustains changing, the attacks changing on these different bands with the attack and the release. You could really freak out about it. Or you could come and do the presets, go to insert and go to punchy, punchy drums too. 
and that's all. Now, there's I think there's a value in going to a preset sometimes versus not. In this case, it's more of a creative thing. So I'm just opening it up and seeing what can pop out and then manipulate it from there. So that's what I did. Now, I could get really technical and do the whole thing by myself, but it's not really necessary for something like this. I think it's sort of a waste of time sometimes to do things like that. You do get very different results. So, you know, hey, try both. Now, we have this. Now, what's interesting about this is we can have expansion and compression in the same plugin on, on the same band. So, like, right here is expanding, but then it compresses over here. So, it's like this cool thing we can do. Now, if I wanted, like, more of a subdued sound, you can see that the highs are being brought up quite a bit. It gives it a lot more brightness. I could reduce the pregame back to normal. And you see the post gain is pretty low. And what we're going to do is instead of doing that, I'll expand the envelope naturally. And we still have some high end, but it's pretty much for, it's much more subdued. And now if I were to put it back to where it was and bring the pregame back up, we get our high end back. So I, if I want a more subdued sound, maybe I want to make room for my kick drum or whatever, I could try and manipulate the spectrum in a way that will play nice. Honestly, it'd be kind of hard to mess with it here. This is mostly for getting the ultimate brass sound that you would want. Then what you do is you open up an EQ and either do a scoop or you would side chain it with your kick or whatever, you know? Usually these sounds happen by themselves though, so you want them to sound big and full and take up a lot of the spectrum. So anyways, that is how I go about making these sorts of sounds. They're very, very, very cool sounds and it's surprisingly simple to make them. Like, honestly, if you really consider, like, the process, find a brass sound, open it up, put it down, like, you have a brass sound, add reverb, add an EQ, and then just go through some compressor presets, and you're good to go. Like, it's not, like, super crazy. If you want to do it on your own, like, let's say that we wanted to make our brass sound, you know, we wanted to do our own compression envelope. Well, I might do something like this. So come into the low, compress that, maybe not so hard, bring it up, and so listen. That's what we got, and I say, oh, look at that. My my mids are kind of missing from here. And what I might try to do is I might try doing something like this instead. And so I'm like, oh, I got my mids, and then let's see here. The highs, now normally down here there's noise, so I might be a little bit careful, compress it and bring that up. Maybe I'll do something like this instead. And I'll bring the attack, I'll bring the release down just for fun. And you get something like that, like, oh, that's a very different sound. You come in here and you just play with it, and you see you get, this, get the spectrum you want. Maybe try doing this instead. And let's try boosting this just crazy. Okay. And so anyways, you come in here and you mess with it. Maybe mess with the master band too. What you could do and what something that they do all the time is you bring it up actually over zero and then you apply a threshold and that will, instead you get saturation instead of distortion. And then you, you're basically going to ram it up against that ceiling and the harder you ram it, the better it'll sound. So not the better, that was, uh, no, not the better it'll sound. Just the more saturated it will sound, the better the saturation will be. I'm not sure if I can even say that without getting like killed. But anyways, anyway, you come in here, you mess with that, you get it sounding the way you want. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.